on to the first division and we had Jer Brown, Gary Curran and Hugh Murray covering the game from Stradbrook. And 4-2, I suppose it was a derby, 4-2 victory over Ray in the, what would you call it, South Dublin derby? Yeah, I suppose whether Cabo's rivals are UCD or Bray, I'm not sure, but there's there's a bit well, of a... Bray's kind of weak though, so I can't... Well, uh, well it's just, just over the border. So. Yeah, but yeah, um, absolutely fantastic win for, for Cabin Teeley and they're kind of picking up where, where yeah, they were they, were they were 4-0 up as well I mean they were I know they won 4-2 in the end but it was sounded like an absolute pace yeah game. I can believe because we get match reports obviously the Twitter updates and stuff like that come on from uh, Gary was on the Twitter and he was doing the updates and you know Marty Waters Kieran Marty Waters you know, going to be so yeah, another better. very impressive player I mean like this player I've always liked to saw him as Rovers he looked really good I'm surprised he's still playing in the first division. Mm. From what I hear, yeah. the Shells tried to sign him last year, but he was committed to Cabin T, so fair play to him. Then uh, Levitas with the uh, second goal, and uh, Keith Dalton with, with the double. Then he was obviously man of the match. Um, Gary Shaw with the goal, and Jack Watson for Bray um, to make it 4-2. I suppose make it, the score a little bit more respectable. Um, Pat Devlin and Keith Dalton caught up with Jair after the game, so you can check that out here. I'm now delighted to be joined by Cabin TV manager Pat Devon for the 4 2 victory against Bray here in Stradbrook tonight. I mentioned there, Pat, perfect start to the season. Yeah, this time last year we were beaten 3 0 by Bray and we didn't deserve it. Tonight we deserve to win. Um, atrocious uh, conditions, I've never seen the like of it in all my life. And uh, we got the four in the first half with the conditions in our favour. And uh, Bray, unfortunately for them, only got two. So great three points, four goals. Pity we didn't keep a clean sheet, but let's not get too greedy. It's only the first game of the season. Really happy for everybody. You mentioned atrocious were diff- were, you mentioned the conditions are were atrocious. Given the fact you were playing with the win in the first half, did you feel it was fighting that you were going in with a lead anyway at half time, never mind four goals? Well I, I think four goals was fantastic. I mean it was a, I'm sure everybody in the ground was shocked. Um, I didn't expect four goals, but I expected to go in, you know, at least one or two ahead, particularly in those conditions. But if we get four, it's a long way to crawl, uh, cr- uh, crawl back. But claw back. If, if, if you have two nil, you know they can get back at you. But four is very, very difficult. But in their credit, to their credit, they got back four two. So look, they ran out of steam. Game was over. We got three points, and that's all it's about. Keith will have <coughs> Dalton will grab a lot of the headlines for scoring the two goals tonight. But it's also good to see your main man, your striker, Kieran uh, Marty, Marty uh, Waters got off the score sheet as well, because that's fighting for a, goal, for a striker to get a goal early on. Look, you know, we, we lost uh, Rob Manley and we were saying, you know, we need to get goals. We've got goals, we've got four, and we got them from different areas, which is brilliant, because you're depending on one, it can be quite difficult. To see Marty score, he'd always score, and, uh, you know, yeah, you see Keith Dalton scoring, and Phileas Labud as he's starting to score, so, you know, we're very happy. You mentioned a lot of preparation was done coming into this game as well. What would it be like now heading into for next week's game against Athlone? Athlone's a big game. We always have difficulty down there and this, this league is always going to be like that. So we don't take anyone for granted. We just get on with it. I would, have, I would still think that Bray were one of the favourites uh, to win the league. Um, we'll just get on with our job and take each game as it comes. I know everybody says, ah, oh, that's a real old cliche, but it's a fact. We'll just get on with it. We had a few key players injured tonight. We lost Paul Fox during the week with a little broken bone in his foot, and he, he's been a key player pre-season for us. We lost Connor Keeley, who's a, you know, always in the team. He's the captain of the club this year. So we've done really well under the circumstances, you know, with a very small budget. Yeah, it's great. So you carried on the momentum you created from last season. Pat, well done tonight. Thanks very much. Game of the first division. I'm here with man of the match, Keith Dalton. Keith, perfect start to the season. Yeah, it was a great start. Obviously, three points on the board, that's the main thing. And thought the boys really stuck well there together. So, yeah, great start. You mentioned, of course, your man of the match. The reason for that is two goals. Uh, one, of course, you ran in on, but the second goal was a piece of beauty. Yeah, the second goal was a great goal now, to be fair. But Marty's first goal now was a very good goal as well now, to be honest. But, yeah, two good goals. You were a surprise package for many people last season making the playoffs. Do you think it was fight as well to start with a win tonight and show this club and team has real aspirations of getting into the Premier Division? Yeah, exactly. We just want to kick on from last year. Like everyone under, underestimated us last year, so we just want to prove everyone wrong again. Conditions were quite tr- difficult and tricky tonight. You could see that in the second half of the wind. Bray had more of the ball. You found it a little bit more harder to k- keep the ball in the second half. It was a good thing that you had that cushion going in at half time 4 0. Yeah, I thought that 4 0 cushion did help us. Obviously, the wind played a big factor in the second half. but. We got our work done in the first half and then just sort of stuck together in the second, so yeah. Looking ahead now to next week, you're on the road, Athlone, they didn't play tonight, their game against Galway was called off. Do you think the fact that you've had 90 minutes on your belt tonight 
we give you a little bit of advantage going into that game? Yeah, maybe you wouldn't underestimate anyone in this league. Everyone can take points off everyone. So we just got to get back in training on Monday and then just play on Friday. Keith, thanks very much thanks for joining us. Thank you. So there you have it, Pat Devlin and Keith Alton, obviously delighted after getting that victory and uh, shout out to Jay Brown who uh, got up with the master of the game. On to the next game then on Friday night. Yeah, well you're talking about Cabo, I mean they were in the playoffs last season, they, they had a really good season and that's a fantastic start for them because I mean Bray would be one of the teams you'd also be talking about at least pushing for the playoffs. Um, then you go down to to Ferry Carrick and Wexford and UCD. Now, UCD have come down, they've lost a lot of players. To me, you, I, I believe UCD are, in a, are going to be in a bit of a rebuilding phase, but they always seem to pick up players, they get good guys in on scholarships, etc. So I still was expecting them to, to push on, at least contend for the playoffs this season. It looked like they were on, on course for all three points. Uh, Colin Whelan put them ahead after a quarter of an hour. I was following it online from, from Tala. It looked like the game was all over. Wexford, Connor English got a, a last gasp equaliser for Wexford. Um, again, it's very hard without being at the games and what you're seeing, but we weren't expecting Wexford, to be frank, to be challenging for the playoffs. And if you are going, I mean, it's not. I'm not saying it's an easy place to go down and win in Ferry Carrick, but... If you are going to be challenging for the first division title, if you're going to be pushing for promotion, it is a place you need to go and get three points. And I'm sure UCD will be probably disappointed uh, coming back up the motorway with with the with just one point. Yeah, but they, see the thing about UCD is, is they always seem to be in a rebuilding process, and because um, they're always losing players. Like we spoke earlier on the show about, you know, Neil Ferruja. You know, leaving he was obviously a key part to Shamrock Rovers getting up Gary O'Neill, Liam Scales, all these players that you know, Jake and Clans have to go on the same path as well. The, all these really good players that got promoted with with uh, UCD that they ended up losing, they lost their manager uh, for two last season as well. So, from a UCD point of view, you know, obviously they'll always be looking to try and get back up into the Premier Division, but the problem is when they get up there is that they end up losing half their players and that's yeah. a big issue for them and as a club they're kind of just more of a feeder club than an actual um you know a force to be reckoned with which is a shame because you know they're, they're you can't really say it bad about ucd as a, as a football no what well, i mean and they're a great club to play for i mean you will get well looked after there um i know there's been financial issues in quite a few clubs in the league of ireland in the past you don't hear that out of UCD. You don't hear about injured players having a problem getting anything, and I mean, nor, nor should you. Yeah. So, I mean, they're a great club. They're very well run. It's it's a great place. Very, You get a very friendly welcome when you go out to Belfield. Um, and, but they, they do seem to pick up players. Yeah, they, of course they lose players, but they, they bring in... It's a fantastic opportunity for, for a youngster going, uh, if, if you get a football scholarship to go to, to go to UCD, you can get a good education as well as to get to play football. So I, I certainly would be recommending it to anybody. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it must be frustrating for them to lose when they get good players like Neil Ferrugia to, to lose them. Mm. But if you look at their, their overall record of producing players in, in general, you look at the top end of the League of Ireland, like, uh, a lot of players have came through UCD. Yeah, oh, if you, I mean, if they were able to hang on to the players they had, they'd probably be top of the table, you know. Yeah, but there's even yeah. like players that are coming in now, like the likes of even Kieran Kilduff and stuff like that. It was good. Yeah. Shell's been a real, you know, um, quality player for Shelburne since he signed. But yeah, as I say, um, UCD, it's unfortunate in a way for them as a club, but I always like to see them doing well. And uh, as I said, they got the point, but they'd be looking to obviously f build on that now. It's the opening day of the season. They didn't lose, so I suppose you could look at it in a positive, in that sense. There's uh, obviously the Galway game was called off, as well. So it's not. Good yeah, and a, and a good point for Wexford. A good start to the season for yeah. Wexford because it's uh, it's probably been a, a tough time of it down there of late, and uh, they didn't have a great season last season. So that that'll be a good boost for them and a, a good start. Mm. I've never really gone and seen Wexford play, so I can't really comment on them too much to uh, to say too much. I've seen UCD a good bit last season. So I can kind of get an idea, but even then they've lost a lot of their players since the last time I've seen them as well. So it's kind of one of those where I kind of will have to go and get to a game. To yeah, I think there's two big... I mean, I saw Wexford, uh, being a Limerick fan, I saw Wexford a few times last season, but there's um, 
there's often such a big turnover. In fact, even I think we saw very different Wexford teams playing Limerick last season. So I don't know. It's what we can't really make too much of a judgment yeah, at this stage exactly. without saying that. And it's very early in the season, yeah. first game. Uh, then on to Saturday night. Then when Cove played, draw a two 0 win. Chrissy Lyons and Sean Brennan with the goals. Um, business as usual, in my opinion, for Drogheda. That's a big win, though. That's a good start. Cove, Cove are one of those teams. It's it, you, you can sometimes they may not travel that well, but you never get an easy game down in Coleman's Park. It's a tough place to go down. First game of the season. I, I believe there was a big crowd despite the weather. Yeah, we had uh, Keen down. Keen McGrath. Yeah, came really and uh, that that's an impressive and that's a good win for Drogheda to go down there because I mean Drogheda are, are definitely. It, either going to be in the playoffs or win the win the first division this season yeah, up they're, there for they're promotion. definitely going to be up there for promotion and that's a, a good statement of intent first game of the season they will have been very disappointed last season you were talking about the shells match i mean if there was a cello crowd in united park if draw had won that match they would have gone up probably gone up as champions yeah i, I know shells went up and you know, you're going to say this they had the, it was a fantastic win for shells but draw came that close and then to miss out in the playoffs as well uh, having beaten Cavan Teeley then to, to miss out against Finn Harps. So it's, uh, yeah, they're, they're going to want to set that right this season. They're a great club and uh, they're, they're going to be definitely up there. And that, that's without seeing them, I know, but that's a serious statement to go down and beat Cove and St. Coven's Park. Yeah, and the fact that Tim Clancy um, stuck around, you know, when he could have left, I'm sure there was the club's interest in him. And he's yeah. determined to get them up this season. I think he sees. He, we speak obviously Kieran uh, is a massive Drogheda fan and covers their games for us and he's he kind of spoken about how Tim Clancy said they, they weren't ready to go up last season so I think in a, in a way obviously he'd be looking to to be happy going up but the fact that they have that extra year now where you can kind of get them prepared to go up would be massive for, for yeah. him and for them and I think as you just see I think he recruited very well and I think you'll see them there or thereabouts come the end of the season and as I said business as usual can't comment too much on Cove you would have seen them more than me and uh, yeah as I said I was expecting draw harder to win so that's okay. all I yeah. really have to it's say it's a good win yeah Yeah. last game then yeah well uh, another we're talking about draw being a real challengers for promotion and challenging for the title one of their big rivals is going to be Longford Town um, yeah, same as last season yeah they're, they're going to be there they're going to be there or thereabouts it was a good win against Shamrock Rovers too. Um, I know there was a little bit of controversy in that they, they, they refused to mention Shamrock Rovers in the programme or anything in the lineups. A uh, development team or something. Just whatever they called it. Yeah, I don't know. It's. Uh, I hope. I hope that I all even, ends. Like, I was gonna like. Yeah. There's always been social media um, outbursts about it. It's like a bunch of L ones complaining about stuff. So I, I didn't even bother getting into it. Look, Shamrock Rovers too, and they're there to make up the numbers. You're obviously a Limerick fan. They're not in the league, so to have someone there just taking their place for a season, you know, just get on with it. Okay, yeah. So it, it was a good no, win. No, I wasn't saying that. Oh, to yeah, you. Yeah, okay. I was just saying it. <laughs> all right. In uh, general, yeah. That's all well, right. yeah, and, and in fairness, I will not. I mean, it's not. It's not Shamrock Rovers' fault that Limerick don't have a team. I'm obviously devastated that we don't have a team in Limerick this season, but. Uh, I'm not in any way blaming Shamrock Rovers or anybody else for that. That's totally down to matters in Limerick. Yeah. And that's hopefully for Limerick uh, to resolve. And uh, and look, it's been agreed. It's only for a season. So like, just yeah. as I said, just get on with it. Like it's 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 good having a team there that are going to be. I wouldn't say to be equal in ability, but just having a team that will put it up to you either way. And in some weeks, they might have some senior players playing for them. Yeah, well, I think that could be that could be the issue in that for some of the clubs have, and I think that was maybe the problem the last time that you don't know what team you're going to face mm. week in week out. But anyway, uh, I think get, they're only allowed to have two players though. Yeah, but getting back to Longford because it, it was a good win for them, and uh, the the opening goal was scored by a player I've actually liked, a Devon Durvin. lovely little midfield player, lovely pass for the ball. Another one I was a bit surprised that maybe didn't get picked up by a Premier Division club. Yeah, and, and the second goal was scored by Rob Manley, who they, they signed from Kevin Teeley, uh, top goal scorer last season, a key player. He's going to be a key player. He was brought in to replace Aaron Dobbs, who went to Shells. So, yeah. yeah good, good start, I suppose. Yeah, a, a great start. 2-0 um, win, win at home. I uh, believe the crowd was very disappointing. I mean, we were talking about the fantastic crowds. I believe there was a good crowd in Cove, even. Uh, talking about the fantastic crowds around around the league so far, 
Um, the photographs I saw from Longford were very, it looked like a, quite a small crowd. Didn't see an official attendance, but... I know that um, Gary Parsons from uh, Tales of the East End had uh, a bus going up there from Shamrock Rovers. Fans going up to support the okay. Shamrock Rovers 2 or B team, whatever you want to call them. Um, they had a bus going up there to cover it, so fair play to them as well. So they're going to have an away support as well this season, which again, there's more attendances, there's more people going to two games. We'd yeah, rather have people going than not going. That's, that's great to see and I see actually a, a, an interesting match here in Dublin next Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock which won't clash with anything else uh, Shamrock Rovers 2 against Galway um, because Galway at loan was called off we they haven't got to kick off their season yet and talking about Drogheda and Longford I think Galway are the probably the third team uh, and Cabin Teeley fans are probably going to be screaming at this but I, I, I think Cabo will be up there or thereabouts for the playoffs but if you're talking about winning the first division I can't see going past Drogheda Longford and Galway being the surprise package. They've they seem to have bought well over the, the off season. It'll be interesting to see how they start. Um, they'll be have been very disappointed that loan game was called off. They were going to have a huge crowd at in DC Park. Ticket sales were going really well. They started last season with a huge crowd against Shelburne, and I know the attendances fell away, but so did the form actually last season. I mean they were they were stuck down in the mid mid table. Uh, just ahead of just around Limerick well before we got the points deduction but anyway enough of that but I think Galway will be up up there or thereabouts at this stage anyway uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do in Tala on Saturday if you're not doing anything else you could do a lot worse I, I think it's only a, is it a fiver in or something it's free mm, to Shamrock Rovers so, yeah. season ticket holders I think anyway apologies if I've got that wrong but I believe it's going to be good value into Tala to watch the, the first division and see Shamrock Rovers too um, Again, it'd be good for the likes of Galway players who might be young coming through and seeing a proper stadium, proper facilities, proper changing rooms. Great pitch, yeah. You it's know, uh, the crowd might not be that big, but the fact that there's football there and again playing on a top quality pitch. Yeah, and the other good thing about I mean, I, I'm certainly long in the tooth enough to remember when all our League of Ireland games were on in the afternoon. Uh, for away fans, yeah, it can Sunday afternoons. Sunday afternoons as they were, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not old enough to remember when a lot of the games were on Saturdays as well. But um, in my youth in the 70s, I was always going to games on Sunday afternoons. The, I, it'd be interesting to see how this 3 o'clock Saturday works because it's a traditional in the UK. We've never had a 3 o'clock Saturday tradition here. and But it does help for away fans. So if you're a Galway fan, you can get to Tala on public transport the train up from Galway or a bus, get the Lewis out to Tala. You can get back after the game at a reasonable hour. Uh, part of the issue, I mean, I, I love the Friday nights and they're great for things like Dublin derbies and all that, but or even Monday nights, I mean. So they're Saturday afternoons, aren't they? Yeah, well, that's true. The Bose Rovers ones are. The other ones should be still Friday nights. But I mean, I, I can't imagine there'll be too many people. Too many Sligo Rovers or Derry City fans travelling on a Monday night. And certainly there's no way of travelling without a supporter's bus or going in your own car. So for something like... Uh, it'd be interesting to see how the 3 o'clock works and how it works for away fans. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up there. And uh, obviously we're going to have content from tonight's games as well. So make sure you check that out. Uh, if you like this video, tell us in the comments what you liked about what you didn't like. And um, let us know your thoughts on any of the games and if you're going to any of the games tonight. Thanks very much for watching. Huge thanks to Gary Spain as always. And we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.